In the video, Candace was speaking about the true nature of the mind as being wide open, spacious, limitless, completely connected and interoperable with everything, open and vast like the clear blue sky, as the true nature of our mind. And in Balanced View, we speak about having a personal experience as being so important because we can, we can talk about the true nature of the mind, the true nature of the human experience, the true nature of reality, but without actually experiencing it, having an experience of our own, it remains just an intellectual exercise to think about, well, what is reality? And so, what is offered right in the very first introduction to completely relax the body, relax the mind, for just a short moment, and what do we experience? For just a second, or maybe a half a second, we notice just a little bit of openness, a little bit of ease, a little bit of relaxation, and thoughts and feelings and sensations continue. But in that flash instant of openness that we experience, that's open intelligence. That is the ground from which everything arises. And so right there, of course, in the first short moment, it's a millisecond and it, it doesn't really mean anything. But as we continue to touch in again and again, to acknowledge this little moment of openness again and again, well, it becomes more and more obvious. And we all know that whatever we focus on, that's what shows up. So if we focus on, in Balanced View, we use the word data to describe our thoughts, our feelings, physical sensations, people, places, and things. So if we focus on that, well, that's all we notice. But if again and again and again we focus on that underlying ease, well, that's what begins to come to the fore. So, after a lifetime of being trained and then continuing to train ourselves to use our mind to focus on our thoughts, to figure them out, to analyze them, well, where's that coming from? Where is it going? And what do I have to do about it? This is how we've been trained to use our mind, to use this incredible device, <laughs> this incredible openness, this incredible presence in such a very small and limited way when we focus on all that mental activity, all our experiences around us. So we come back again and again to that initial experience of, of openness. And so please be just be so gentle and loving and compassionate with ourselves because this is how we've been trained. And so, of course, after a lifetime of trying to figure things out, manage the thoughts, get more good thoughts, less bad thoughts, be better, be more proactive, whatever it is, of course, it takes time. But quite simply, and this is in my own per personal experience, the more that I have focused on openness, just openness, well, the more openness is revealed. And so, yes, we all continue to have thoughts, feelings, and experiences, but 
we have a choice when, when, when doubt or if we're not doing enough or why am I still indulging, avoiding, and replacing? Well, there is the perfect opportunity to just completely relax at that. And, oh yeah, I don't have to chase after that. For me, when I, when I found out that I had a choice, that I could focus on the data or I could focus on openness, I could focus on open intelligence, well, that was, that was a revolutionary shift. And, of course, I couldn't always exercise the choice because I just wasn't trained in it. And so gradually training up to see, wow, I, I don't have to go there with that. I don't have to any longer be hard on myself about having thoughts, about wondering about the data that, you know, I can just really relax and trust. And the beauty of, of joining together in community, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is we see that, yeah, most of us have a very similar kind of thing going on. And so, at first, for me, I was definitely bouncing between relying on data and relying on open intelligence. But gradually, because I made a 100% commitment to focus on open intelligence, so gradually that bouncing, that roller coaster ride, it just settled down on its own. So, and that's where we don't need to do anything comes in. Now, it's not that we don't do anything, but we don't have to do anything about the data. And, and the power of open intelligence is revealed in allowing the data to be as it is. So we're not rejecting anything. We're also not clinging to anything, not pushing anything away, simply allowing it to kind of flow on its merry way. Nothing needing to be done. And gradually, I'll speak again about my own experience. Less and less did I feel like, oh, that's my data. It was data. It was the liveliness, the ceaseless, spontaneous liveliness of the basic state of open intelligence. And so allowing open intelligence to be revealed. So not chasing after it, but allowing it gradually, and then taking advantage of the support. The support is just like a reminder, the Four Mainstays, that was spoken about so beautifully. It's a reminder to just, oh right, I can just completely relax with all of that. Because on our own, on my own, oh, my, my mind would just go crazy would just go crazy. So for me, the support was really key. And, and approaching it in a very relaxed way. Yeah, that is the perfect way. Um, so the, the, the no pitfalls that Candace was speaking about is, and what you've experienced, is we don't get introduced to open intelligence and then forget about it. Once we are introduced to the true nature of reality as a vast, unchanging, luminous creativity, ceaselessly displaying itself, we don't forget that. We don't go back. But yes, there is like, well, those moments, well, why am I not getting this? For me, it was why don't, why can't I see the inseparability of data and open intelligence? Like, you know, I, I wanted to go to the head of the class right away and like... <laughs> but I had the misperception that recognizing open intelligence looked a certain way, that it meant everything was different 
maybe just a little bit different, but better, but somehow I was better or something. So to discover that everything as it is is the perfection of open intelligence. So to be able to allow everything about myself and my experience to just be as it is, no longer struggling and striving to be better, to get somewhere. Because this is it. And I don't mean it in any way like, sorry folks, this is it. No. (laughs) This, this is the true nature of reality. The, The wild, vibrant, alive, moment to moment experience of what underlies everything. And so we're just very gently, through short moments, we're just doing that. Oh, okay, what? All right, so I'm feeling really bad and I had a bad experience and I want to get rid of it, but you know, I'm not supposed to use antidotes. <laughs> All of that is part of this wild, vibrant aliveness. And so we can just allow it, oh yeah, oh right, there I go again on that one theme of like being really hard on myself. Okay, uh, I'll just relax about that. You know, and so we kind of come back, I definitely have in the past, and still do give myself little pep talks. Like maybe, do you really want to worry about that? No, I'd much rather, you know, enjoy the sky and and relax. And so, you know, that's, that's the choice point. At the crucial juncture, as those thoughts that we're not doing it right or we have to do something else arise, right there, we see, oh yeah, I can, I can let that be. I don't have to believe that. But this takes time. This takes time. It's like an unraveling. An unraveling of a false covering that shrouds everything. And so we just come back, open intelligence, right, okay. I remember I didn't even know know what open intelligence was, and I thought I'm supposed to rely on that. I, I don't I don't I don't know, but I I could relax. I could rest body and mind, and that was enough, and that is enough. And that is enough. Now, I love the question about the body. And, you know, the body is such a compelling data stream. Wow, it seems so real. I mean, yeah, this is real. I, I've had it for a while. And it is. It, it does. It can be all-encompassing. But as we begin to allow open intelligence to express through us, by letting our data be as it is, well, we see that we have a great capacity, a great agency to, rather than focus on our data, focus on love, focus on peace, focus on great benefit. And gradually, I, in my experience, began to see the body as a tool for giving and receiving love. And not this burdensome thing, but this incredible opportunity, this device that's designed perfectly for giving and receiving love. And so I had, but I had to get over my stuff before I could allow that expression to really shine, to really no longer be distracted by the data, to shine. Now, it doesn't mean we don't take care of the body. We take care of everything in our lives. Impeccably, maybe, the body deserves to be supported and taken care of. But the real fuel of the body is open intelligence. 
It's what fuels the body. So just for a moment, if we take a short moment, there's this spaciousness that is much bigger than the body. So it's bigger than the body already in one short moment. And so we begin to see, okay, so now we're, we're not trying to get to seeing the body as open intelligence because it's, that's, we can't think our way into that. This is like a miraculous expression of open intelligence. That we, that we, yes, it's, it's real. It's certainly real. Temporary. Temporary, but a genuine expression of open intelligence because that's all there is and that's where everything comes from. And so we just, we, we take care of the body, but by relying, again, that's the same practice. So when we think about the body, oh, oh, I think I'll just relax with that. Because it's so compelling, the body. Now, some of you know that I, I had a really crazy physical affliction during the summer. And I mean crazy. Like, yeah, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital a few times. But, and I remember having this thought. Wow, I'm so glad that I've practiced short moments for the past 12 years because I never would have been able to relax with any of that. You know, and so, again, be so gentle when, the, when really afflictive data arise, like physical illness, like pain, like excruciating emotional upheaval. Just be so gentle, because this, too, is an expression of open intelligence. But it's just so compelling, and so we're gentle with ourselves, and gradually, gradually, open intelligence shines brighter than anything else. And so it's not like back to sharing my own experience, it's not like every moment I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm open intelligence. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm a human being living in this vast, inexhaustible, unlimited, incomprehensible, great benefit. Okay, well, I'll just be with that because anything else is just working to try and understand something that surpasses understanding. Can't understand it, but we can experience it for one short moment at a time. 